So what do you say we spend a little time in the garden today? All right, all right, all right. I tell you what, it is chilly out here. This weather cannot make up its mind. Yesterday I was in shorts and flip flops and today gotta have a jacket out here and maybe I'm just a weenie, but I swear 55 degrees down here just feels so much colder than if you go up north. I've been up there in the winters and, and 50 degrees up there, never seen that cold. But man, down here with this wind going, it just seems cold out here today. My thermometer is, uh, like I said, it says 55, but it just sure feels a lot colder than that. It's just kind of back and forth, back and forth, hot, It'd be 75 one day and then it could be 40 the next day. But we just, just deal with it. Just have to kind of look at your phone walk outside in your underwear and see what kind of clothes you're gonna have to put on that day but anyway i just got through picking me a little mini mess of these english peas right here behind me i wanted to show you those kind of talk about those in a minute i want to look at some of our cabbage trials that we got going on and also talk about our onions and look at how they're growing so right here we've got a row of sugar prince english peas and they're about in some spots halfway up that hoarding over trellis there and this is the first time i've grown this variety i've grown the old standby green arrow pea last year we grew one called mr big that we really like first year trying this one now we got some some little bit of death there from the hard freeze we had but these puppies are still flowering still kicking along and uh, i have to say they are pretty good climbers when i grow english peas every year the weeds kind of get the best of me right down there around that trellis where I can't really weed or do anything because those plant stems are a little delicate but hey if if that's the only place we got weeds no big deal we can um we can take care of that once these plants are done but they're doing pretty good considering those few hard freezes they had to um kind of suffer through and looks like we're going to get some continual production as long as we can survive the winter without too much more of that real real icy frost i think we can um just keep picking these guys for a while on into maybe early spring or so now i mentioned i've grown the green arrow and then we grew that mr big last year and this variety the sugar prints is a little different than those the pods don't get near as long but the pods are a lot more tender. So you can eat these. Uh, you can wait till they get big like that and shell them. Or you can take these small ones that aren't filled out yet. And the pods are nice and tender. You can just snack on those. They're really good and sweet. So you can use them as what we call a snow pea. Or you can let these peas get larger here. And even when the peas get larger, these pods are still nice and tender and sweet. So you can just cook that whole unit right there. Now those Mr. Big Peas make a big long pea there uh, they fill out really well and if i was going to grow some to freeze to shell and freeze just the peas that's probably the variety i'll go with but this has been a great one just for kind of snacking and uh we'll take these inside and we'll just kind of throw them in the pan and just cook them whole like this some of the peas will fall out nothing wrong with that everything's nice and tender nice and sweet so although the pods are smaller, I do really like this variety. Uh, I wouldn't say that it was like my go-to, you know, preserving variety just because the pods are a little smaller. But uh, as far as taste-wise, these here really can't be beat. Some of the pods there make a pretty decent sized pea, as you can see there. But uh, flavor-wise, I think this is my favorite English pea. Not the biggest pods, but uh, hey, they taste great. So here in a little while, once it gets closer to lunch, I'm gonna take these puppies right here and just throw them in a hot skillet, maybe a little oil, just heat them up a little bit. Don't take a whole lot of cooking with these guys. You can eat them raw. Man, that's sweet, delicious. You can't find that right there at the grocery store. But I better stop, because I'll be done stood here and eat all these things. Let's go check on those onions before I eat all these peas. So our allium plot behind me here, where we've got eight different varieties of onions. We've got elephant garlic and a row of leeks. It's kicking along pretty nicely. And one thing I experimented with last year, 
and I tried it again this year and now I'm pretty certain it's the way to go is planting onions even earlier than we've planted them before usually we always aim for any time in november getting them in the ground but last year i planted some in late october and this year i did that as well with this first row right here these plethora onions and they just look great not to say the other ones don't look great as well they're just a little bit behind so kind of learned that yeah we can get away with planting these things in late october and the eventual result is even bigger onions than if we planted in November because we can just maximize that vegetative stage even more. So I think in the future, I'm just gonna be even more better prepared and instead of trying to just plant a row or two here every day, you know, throughout early to mid November, I think I'm gonna just have all my transplants ready to go in the ground late October because that appears to be the way to go. So these are those plethora of onions I've planted late October or so. And these are getting big enough to where we can come in here and pull every other one, eat those as green onions. And we'll leave the rest of them in the ground to get nice and large. But these things got a nice little, I don't know, it's probably big as around a quarter, a little bigger. I'll sacrifice this one here because we may want to eat it. As you can see there, some nice size on it, especially for as early in the onion season as it is really good looking onion this is a sweet onion it's a granix type so it makes a more flattened type onion and uh that is going to be a tasty little treat there we can chop that up put them on some peas put that in a soup or something and um probably soon going to come through here and pull every one of the, every other one of these and leave these guys right here in here to make some big nice softball storage onions there and if we compare that guy right there which was planted in late october to some of these other rows which were planted one two three maybe even four weeks later you can see these guys aren't nearly further or as far along so i think planting even earlier than we normally plant is going to be the way to go not to say that these onions here don't look great they just uh, not kicking along as well as those ones we planted before. Just give you a little quick update on our elephant garlic here. It's looking great. Got, I think of those two 30 foot rows I planted, I had all but one clove make a plant. So pretty good success rate there. We got uh, plants a foot apart. So we got 60 plants there. So 59 out of 60 cloves came up for us. And there are leeks right here. And so those leaves are starting to get nice and big. And uh, as soon as those stalks get a little stronger, we'll start healing those puppies, throwing some dirt to them so we can get some nice big old leeks. So right here in our no-till plot is where we saw the most significant damage from that really icy freeze we had. I don't know, it's been about four weeks ago now and we're pretty worried about some of this stuff the cabbage looked pretty bad broccoli looked bad cauliflower looked really bad but some of this stuff has started to recover and we're doing some trials in here comparing some different varieties and in some cases it's kind of hard to tell any differences between the varieties at this point I haven't started harvesting anything out of here with the exception of some lettuce but some crops like the cabbages I'll show you in a minute, we can see some pretty considerable differences between the varieties. And I brought my list with me today so we can see which varieties are which. I got my little map I made when we planted this stuff. And so I wanna kind of walk you through, show you what's going on in this plot and talk about the differences that we're seeing already between some of these varieties, especially with the cabbage. So let's start off right here where you don't see a whole lot right now because we had some butterhead lettuce in here we ate a good bit of it some of it uh was starting to just get a little old and, and get a little bitter so we came in here with what was left of it and just kind of scalped it to the ground with the mower this is our no-till plot so no tilling allowed here we just took the mower and scalped it to the ground and between where these two rows were probably going to come in here and plant a row Maybe beets, maybe spinach, something like that. Come here and direct seed, a little row of something. I still do have a few heads of this Cherokee lettuce here. It seems to be holding on a little better than that butterhead did. You can see that looks pretty good. 
and uh, so probably still 10 or 12 heads there of that stuff and uh, once we take care of all that eat all that give it away then we'll come in here and plant us another row of something between where these two lettuce rows were moving on to the cabbage this first row here is all the same variety so no real trials we did with red cabbage we just planted this variety here called red jewel and like i said it it still looks a little rough but the interior leaves are not looking too bad and it looks like we may make a head eventually but you can see all those leaves that got damaged by that ice there but um in the center there things appear to be recovering nicely and um should start seeing some head formation pretty soon i don't know how big a head we're going to make <coughs> considering the damage we took but we should get a decent little bit of cabbage here now over to the green cabbage where we have two rows and four different varieties planted this is where i can see the biggest differences between the varieties let me back up here and i'll show you so two rows of green cabbage here this row on the right has cheers and stonehead cabbage this row on the left has early flat dutch cabbage or early dutch cabbage i can't remember the specific name in the first half of the row and on the back half there it has bobcat cabbage now this variety here the cheers is one i grew last year made some massive heads with it and this is the one if i was a betting man i would have bet you that was going to perform better than the rest of them as far as making a large head and it certainly looks better than the rest of them at this point this cheers is kind of a commercial variety just a really really awesome cabbage variety we still see that damage there sorry i hit the camera still see the damage there from the frost but um in the interior here everything looks good and it looks like we're well on our way to maybe at least some you know four or five pound heads of cabbage there this variety here this early dutch variety is just like the name suggests it is early and we kind of expected this this is the earliest cabbage variety we carry and it's already starting to form some little heads there now these won't get as big as the cheers will and you can look at the leaves and tell that but it's an early producer so we'll get some smaller heads but we'll get some good early production out of these now let's compare the stonehead and the bobcat so this row here we've got stonehead and some of it's already starting to make heads so it appears to be kind of as early or close to as early as that early dutch but the plants on here don't look as big and i don't think we're going to get massive heads here but we are going to get some nice early production there now the closest variety to that cheers as far as what i think is going to make some really big heads and and really good looking plants here is this bobcat variety first time i've grown this one but really really impressed with it and some of these plants look nice still getting uh or starting to get a little bit of head formation in there but really nice big leaves so if i had to take a guess i'd say this bobcat's gonna be a tight second as far as head size compared to that cheers so i would put cheers one bobcat two stonehead and early dutch probably a tie at number three if i had to rank them at this point point. and over to our broccoli and cauliflower where we have two rows of broccoli here and then two rows of cauliflower here so these plants still look a little rough you can see that freeze damage there but these things were just laid over on the ground for about a week or so and they have made quite the improvement they have stood up and um, put on some new growth and i think we're going to end up with a decent harvest after all as long as we can stay away from any more of that icy frost so the the kind of inside of this plant here looks pretty pretty good let's talk about the varieties here if we can see any differences between them so this first row of broccoli right here is all green magic broccoli and then if we compare that here to this row we have two varieties in the second row here we have godzilla on this end and then towards that end the second half of it we got emerald crown and i really can't tell a difference 
between all of it. It all pretty much looks the same at this point. Now, I'm sure we'll be able to tell some differences once we get some head formation and we start harvesting these guys, but really no discernible differences between those three varieties at this point. Kind of <clears throat> the same thing with the uh, cauliflower here. So this first row, we've got all white cauliflower. We've got Minute Man on this first half and we've got Twister on the second half. And those all look pretty much the same to me. I mean, you see a bunch of frost damage there. You see some new growth that looks pretty good, but can't really, you know, make out a big difference between either of those varieties there. We just have to wait and see what our harvest looks like and the timing of the harvest, and maybe we can draw some fair comparisons at that point. The second row here is where we have our colorful cauliflower. We've got graffiti on the first half, and we've got the flame star, which is kind of the yellow or orange flavored heads, not flavored, orange colored heads on the second half. Now I will say I see some differences here. The flame star looks a good bit better than the graffiti does, which tells me that the graffiti just got whooped a little bit more by that ice than the flame star did. It's unusual, I grew the graffiti last year through the dead of winter and had an awesome harvest, never saw any issues like this, but we didn't have the ice that we had um, three or four weeks ago. So that ice did a number on the graffiti, still looks like we'll get some, um, some head harvest there. Those plants are starting to stand back up, but the flame star looks a good bit better there than the graffiti does. So not a whole lot of differences between all the broccoli and cauliflower. The only big difference I can see is comparing that flame star to the graffiti there. So if you've been following the channel for a while, you know we used to run a market farm out of all these 10 plots here that I have. And we're no longer doing that this year. I hung up my market farming boots so I could have more time with the kids and the wife and the family on the weekends, go camping, fun stuff like that. But just because we're not market farming anymore didn't mean we downsized our garden area. We still have the same 10 plots we're growing in. But since we're not growing for just straight production to sell anymore, we can do things a little different. We can grow more cover crops, we can take better care of our soils, and the main thing, like I showed you today, is we can do a lot more trials. So we can plant different varieties in the same plot and really compare them and look at the differences, whether one comes off early, whether one produces a bigger head like the cabbage, all these kind of different nuances between varieties is really interesting to look at, in my opinion. It's not that any of those four varieties of cabbage are bad varieties, there's just some obvious differences there. Some people like smaller heads of cabbage because they're easier to cut up. The flavor may be more tender on the smaller ones. Some people like the real big heads of cabbage. Maybe if you're making some sauerkraut or something like that, you want some nice big heads there. So you get the most bang for your buck out of the space that that cabbage plant occupies in your garden there. So I've found it really enjoyable doing these trials so far this fall and winter, and I look forward to doing a lot more um, come spring where we're not trying to grow just a ton of production, but we can just look at these varieties and kind of compare them and um, see the difference, see the differences between them. And then maybe that will help you better decide on which varieties you want to grow in your garden. So if you're doing any trials out there or have done any trials in the last year or two where you're comparing different varieties, especially maybe even cabbage, let me know how those worked out for you. Let me know the differences you saw between certain varieties and maybe why you're now leaning toward one variety over the other. A lot of people do trials with tomatoes, but they don't necessarily always do it with some of this other stuff like broccoli, cabbage, onions, and so forth. So if you're doing some trials, if you're comparing some varieties, I'd love to hear about your results thus far. I'll put some links below to all the varieties I showed you today. So you can go check those out on our website. If you enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and ring that little bell so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you did enjoy this video, check out these other two videos right here. I think you'll really enjoy those as well. We'll see you next time.